Round six here with the Vintage Challenge. Let's take a look. This is a hand that can do nothing. Let's mulligan. You get some of those with this deck. Again, the Time Walk and the Mentor. This time with a Force of Will to boot. Force Pitching Thought Cast. I guess you have Force Pitching Outcome, but can't keep a Zero Lander without a Lotus. Let's mulligan. All right, now we have a hand that can go turn one, thought cast, potentially even turn one, outcome. So this hand is pretty solid. I'm going to keep this and scrap mental mist up to the bottom here. Don't think we really need that. Oh, I'm on the play. Oh, I rolled a two. Okay, I'm on the play. Sounds good to me. All right, I'm glad I bottomed that mental mist up then. Are you my remedy? Alrighty, and let's fire off a seat looking for a monastery mentor and a... I couldn't say it in time. That's why I didn't get it. But next turn we get to outcome for two. That's not great, but it's passable. Oops. Probably playing Seed of the Synod next turn as our land in case we draw a Thought Cast off the outcome. Makes sense to me. What does my opponent got? They got eight cards in hand. What threatening stuff are they going to come up with? Uh, Wasteland. All right, I can dig that. Sure, my hand's fine against Wasteland. They think they're taking us off Metalcraft. This actually, it does hurt our outcome because we can't outcome right now. Oh, but we can have an even better outcome next turn then. So let's go top. Then let's spin top. Don't really know if there's anything we'd find here that we'd want to cast. Keeping Force of Will on top seems reasonable. Uh, we'll change it to Mox Ruby if this doesn't work out. Or sorry, if this does work out, I guess. We'll get to outcome and draw a whole bunch of cards next turn. All right, Mishra's Workshop and what's the play? Do they have a sphere effect? Thorn. I feel like we're so close to just being able to race Thorn here. This turn I get to play Ruby. At which point I will have four mana, which four is not enough. But then I get to untap, outcome, hit my land drop. I don't want to pitch my outcome. If I pitch my outcome, what do I have left? I have ruby... What's the other card on top of my deck? Ruby Force of Will and like a bad card, right? Like a Mental Misstep or something again. I think it's another men Mental Misstep. I'm going to operate as if the third card on our deck is a Mental Misstep. Oh, I think it's a Seed of the Synod. That's what it is. Oh, you know what? That actually is good. Because we want to hit our land drop. I'm going to say okay. And I think just hitting our land drops should be enough here. Our opponent's not going to use the floating mana. They're not going to be casting anything else. So let's spin the top. What the hell is this? All right. Alrighty, let's... Um... Yeah, we want this Mox Ruby. I guess we could keep Force of Will on top still. Because we can always spin. Yeah. We'll spin if we want the Force of Will. Let's just draw the land. For now. Alright, so Mox Ruby this turn. The plan is to just, on the following turn, draw five cards.
Now what's awkward here, if they play another taxing effect, they're going to. All right, so now we have to play our land past the turn, outcome, end of turn. Then we get to untap with some lands. All right, it's still a huge draw effect. All we have to do is find a Monastery and Mentor, and we're okay. I don't want to lose this outcome. Just don't want to lose the outcome. I guess I could have spun top in response. Oh, yeah, that was a mistake. Because if I have another outcome on top... Well, let's see if I was wrong. No, I don't. I have a Flooded Strange, which means I can shuffle away this Force of Will, though. Uh, I kind of like that, actually. And that gives us double white mana. Flooded Strand, and now one, two, three, four, five, six mana to cast Outcome, end of turn. Just a little draw five. End of turn, Factor Fiction, you lose. That's basically the game plan here against an opponent that is playing a prison deck. And what do they have to imprison us with this turn? Another Thorn? Another Sphere? No, a Precursor Golem. All right, well, that's a decent clock. It's a two-turn clock, but... We're just going to try to find a Monastery Mentor and win through that. We know they're not playing a Wasteland this turn, so let's just go ahead, grab ourselves a little Tundra. So on our next turn, all we're going to be able to do is replay our Moxon, pretty much. Though I guess if we find a Monastery Mentor and a land, we just win. All right, we'll do it in their end step just to make sure. <clears throat> Hold control, let's draw a card with top. And then let us outcome here for everything. Tapping out. So yeah, this is a straight up draw five. Pretty savage. There's the Monastery Mentor. We drew a Mox Jet. We didn't hit a land yet, but we have two draws to hit it. Okay, no land. <coughs> Oh, land wouldn't help us because, uh, right, yeah, yeah, land would not actually be enough. We actually just have to play the Mentor, hope that they don't have a Walking Ballista for one turn, and then just dump our hand. Dig Through Time is actually cheaper than Preordain right now, so I'm going to discard these Preordains. They cost three mana a pop. Oops. Normally, Dig Through Time is more expensive than Preordain. All right, so our seat's going to get Wastelanded. Uh, does that just completely stop us in our tracks, then? I think it might. I mean, if they have a walk-in Ballista, we also just lose, which looks like they're looking to pay some, some costs here. No, this isn't walking Ballista. This is a... Uh... Well, I don't know what they have until they tap the appropriate colors of mana. It's always fun to try to guess, though, on Magic Online. Or not colors, but appropriate amounts of mana. Okay, just Factory getting in there. And that probably means that's it for my opponent. Oh, they're going to use the Floating Mana as well to play. Oh, if they play a Sphere here, oh yeah, we're dead. So now we need to hit a Land Drop just to play a Mox Emerald. No, I'm not going to block. Uh, we can maybe dig through time. So we move to discard. We'll have eight cards in the bin. No, we're one mana short of casting dig through time even. So dig through time, you can actually discount the delve cost by removing enough cards. So it costs um, 11 mana right now, which is 2 plus 9 but we'll only have eight cards in the bin when we discard to end of turn. Yeah, nothing we can do, right? I can chunk block Precursor Golem this turn. And then I take eight. Okay, let's concede.
worth just making sure, but we did not have it. All right, no, we're going to keep Hercules, and I think we're going to keep Snapcaster this time. Take out Merchant Scroll, take out Dig Through Time, take out some Preordains, take out all of our Frexian mana spells, and an Outcome or two. I think two might be okay. Fragmentize, Sword Swords Balance. Steel Sabotage, Steel Sabotage. I gotta sort these by converted mana cost. Oh, I know Planes is going in as well. Alright, what else do we have? Oh, we have two more Hercules. Jeez, okay. Guess we're boarding out another Preordain. You don't need much. With a Monastery Mentor, you really don't need much to win the game. So that's kind of the idea here, to just act like a blue-white control deck as much as we can. So maybe along that lines, we board out another outcome. The card is expensive to cast. It does generate you mana on the playback, but as you saw that game, sometimes you can cast it, but then you can't recast your artifacts... Then you're left casting no spells anymore. That is a pretty real thing that can happen. Like I said, I do like the Mystical Tutor because Balance is just such a powerful card. Pretty much only keep Mystical Tutor in the deck on sideboarded games when Balance is in the deck. As like kind of a soft rule. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll do Brainstorm. It's not insane. Brainstorm's not as good as hitting your land drops as Preordain is. Good to be on the play here. What do we have? A turn one, nothing. But we do have Planes, Fragmentize, and then Force of Will. Alrighty. We might even be doing Force Pitch Hercules Recall here. I'm just going to hit my land drop. If we get Strip Mind, it's unlucky, but not winning that game anyways. Oh, you know what? Let's play Mox Emerald. Uh, let's not play Mox Opal, I think, but <clears throat> do play Mox Emerald. This way, if they play a Sphere, we can just Fragmentize it. Because otherwise, we'd be spending a turn playing Mox Emerald. In the next turn, trying to fragmentize it. All right, Chalice for zero. Uh, that's fine. We have to fragmentize one of these cards, Force of Will, the other one. So I'm going to force this one. Right? Yeah, I'm going to Force of Will this one. Alrighty, let's see a rock. No, no rocks yet. And Chalice is restricted, so we don't need to play around it anymore. Just need to draw any other land or any other artifact, and we can cast Thought Cast here. Either of those two things will do it. Artifact Land, of course, being the best. Seat of the Synod. Foundry Inspector. Yep, that's the next threat to run out there. Followed by an Arcbound Ravager. Sounds good. A little more aggressive hand from my opponent this game. Still nothing. Alrighty. I might actually just play Mox Opal here. I think we might need the mana if they play... Uh, <clears throat> If they play a sphere effect of some sort, we might just be that that tight on mana. All right, we're going to take four damage. Four damage is a reasonable amount of damage to take. Nothing like that eight damage coming in from the uh, Reality Smashers. Though this deck does play Reality Smashers of their own in Fleet Wheel Cruiser. Five power haste creatures, just good and vintage. Slash Panther used to make an appearance, but 
why play four attack haste creatures when you can play five attack haste creatures, right? Still cast a balance here. That would be pretty good. It'll even blow up one of my opponent's lands. I can dig it. Are they playing two separate walking ballistas? No, they're playing a Tritosphere so that I can't balance even. Okay. Well, now even if I draw an artifact, I can't cast it. And I think they've got me on a two-turn clock. Let's see. This turn they can swing for six, put me down to nine. And the next turn, yeah, they swing for... Seven, put me down to two, and pop their Ballista for a whole bunch. But I'm not dead this turn. Oh, they didn't pump up Ballista. I guess they have another... They've got, like, Tangle Wire here. Tangle Wire to end my tournament. I will still play the final round. I think there is one more round here. I will still play it just for fun. Nope, it's a Sphere. Yeah, there's a lot of workshops online. It's definitely not a good environment for all of this stuff. Alrighty. We're dead. Uh, I guess I won't F6. We still need my opponent to see it. What could I draw? Could I draw... No, with Trinosphere out, Lotus is, in, is no longer an out. But what if I draw Telerian Academy? I'll have access to 5 mana... I can thought cast into. Huh. All right. Well, they decided not to kill me, which is interesting because it was free, right? They could have just sacked all their creatures here to try to kill me. Like they're not using that. Oh, they're only at six life points. That's why they didn't do it. They want to preserve their life total. If I had like a Hercules recall. Yeah, I guess that's what I would have needed, right? I don't have the Hercules. I pitched it to Force of Will. But I would have needed to draw land, Hercules. They'd have to pick up all their shit. Uh, that, that's not what happened, though. We lost instead. Yeah, that was that was close. I mean, this thought cast was a dead card. Not like I would have been able to cast Hercules here anyways, because I never drew the final mana either. I kept the hand because Planes is so good. We had Fragmentized Force of Will, but maybe it was just too slow. I thought Thought Cast was going to be enough. But turns out, it was not. So that makes us 3-3 here in the Vintage Challenge.